on this playoff edition of Titans All Access. The Titans won at Houston to clinch a playoff spot. We'll let you experience the sights and sounds of Sunday's big win. Ryan Tannehill leads the Titans into Foxborough this weekend. Number 17 talks about the Tennessee offense with Mike Keith and this week's Nissan Insider. Coach Dave McGinnis takes us beneath the surface to show us the creative ways that the Titans are getting Brown involved. As Mike Vrabel takes his team to Foxborough, Vrabel has a playoff victory, not a reunion on his mind. General Manager John Robinson gives us his keys to a win over the Patriots. It's time to make a playoff run as Titans All Access starts now. When I was young, my father told me, my dear son, respect yourself and don't forget where you're coming from. My dear son, try to understand what it really means to be a man and fight for what you really care about. Trouble. He's sacked! Taken down by Wesley Woodyard! 69 yards, Derek Henry. Touchdown! Touchdown! Tight! Tennessee will not go quietly! We welcome you to Titans All Access with playoff Amy Wells. Hello. A better version even. Oh, if that, that's possible. Is that possible? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm Mike Keith, the same. And we're glad you're with us for an extra edition of Titans All Access. We hope we're busy for the next several weeks because the Titans are in the playoffs. And let's talk playoffs. Let's start off talking about quarterbacks. Who you want to talk about? Well, you know New England's quarterback, Tom Brady. Yeah, he's fine. He's pretty great. He's all right. But you know who's been great this year? Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill has been great. His first ever playoff start upcoming, and we are excited to see what number 17 does. I had a chance to sit down with him for the Nissan Insider, and you know this guy, totally humble, all about team, and what did he want to talk about first? His teammates, who are his weapons. <laughs> I want to ask you about some of your receivers. Just give me some quick thoughts as I say their name. A.J. Brown, let's start with. Explosive, physical, playmaker. You know, a guy who I think is more dangerous with the ball in his hands than, than he is without it. You know, it's a guy that, that we want to get touches and get involved. We've seen what he can do every time he touches the ball. Off schedule, crossing route, and ends up catching it late and, and turning it up and scoring. So that's something that he's done all year for us and, and hope to continue. Tajay Sharp. Consistent. You know, he's a, he's a guy, he probably hadn't had as many touches as he'd like, but he, he's consistent. He's there when we need him. You know, a guy we, we believe in and we trust that whenever his number's called, he's going to be there to make a play. And he's done that multiple times for us this year. Janu Smith. Uh, strong. Strong and fast. You know, you look at him as a tight end. He's a guy that, he's physical, he's tough. You see him with the ball in his hands, he's a lot like AJ. You know, he's tough to bring down. We always say the first guy never tackles him. He's able to, you know, fight through those those tackles and get that extra yardage. So he's made some big plays for us. Corey Davis. Corey Davis is uh, talented. You know, a guy who's been good for us. Tight coverage, guy on his back, and I was able to uh, kind of get it on the body. So, you know, I was really proud of the way he played fast, played physical, and, and was really crisp in his route. So, you know, really proud of the way he played. Ryan, what has been the key to completing 70% of your passes this season? I think it starts up front with the O-line giving me time and a clean pocket, and then the guys downfield making a play. You know, if I have that belief that if I put it in a good position and it's a catchable ball that our guys are coming down with it, they prove that time and time again. Finally, winning's the most important thing in the playoffs, no doubt about it, but winning means you get to keep playing. And for you, in watching the joy with which you have played over the last two months and just how much fun it looks like you're having. We see the shots on TV, and I know you're over 30, but you look like you're about 17 with that smile on your face. Winning means you get to keep playing, and that's a huge factor because I know you want this team to keep going for what it's meant and what it can be. Yeah, no doubt. I love playing football. I love competing with the guys. I love 
the preparation day in and day out, the grind, and, and nothing's better than win in the locker room after a game. You know, just that moment you get to share with your teammates after putting in a ton of work, blood, sweat, and tears, and, and get to kind of just relish that moment in the locker room after the game. So obviously we want to keep doing that as long as we can. Good stuff with Ryan Tannehill. Titans need good stuff from Ryan Tannehill in New England. Absolutely, they do. We've got more good stuff coming up on this edition of Titans Hall Access, including a look at Mike Vrabel's return to Foxborough and why the national media is making such a big deal about it. Speaking of the Patriots, our general manager, John Robinson, previews the Titans matchup in Foxborough with Tom Brady and company. And Dave McGinnis comes by to show us the way the Titans are using A.J. Brown in the offense. The rookie receiver is going crazy, but up next. Up next, we are taking you down to the sidelines for the Tennessee Titans victory over the Houston Texans. It's what got us here in the first place, so we're going to review it. The sights and sounds from Houston next. Welcome back to Titans All Access. If you listen to Titans Radio, you know Amy Wells is on the sidelines for Titans Radio, providing information and interviews. It's all very interesting. You have a unique perspective. And so Sunday, as the Titans clinched a playoff berth in Houston, you were on the field for all of it. What was it like? You know, it was a little bit more emotional than I thought it was going to be. Everybody was so excited. And especially after Derrick Henry had that 53-yard run and he was able to clinch being the rushing leader, it was such a big deal. Everybody was so excited, and it was – I cried a little bit. Did you really? I did. Yeah, oh, it's, not, nice. it's an emotional game, It's Mike. an emotional game. It's a big deal to make the playoffs. And so we here at Titans All Access want to take you inside the moment so you can experience it like Amy Wells did. Here are the sights and sounds from Sunday's big win in Houston. Try not to cry. <laughs> Y'all ready? All right, man. Not a lot got to be said because you already understood, man. Only thing that matters, bro, is how much energy we bring today. How, how lit we going to make it today? How many plays you going to make today? How many times you going to hype up your teammates? How many times you going to pick a teammate up? They get in the playoff, they said you got to do one thing. Lock the f***ing gates. Yes, sir. Hey, lock the gates on three. One, two, three. Lock the gates. OK, we're going to have to tackle. Like, we missed too many tackles right there. Tannehill's in the gun. Takes the snap. Tannehill looking, forced out to his right, throws, complete. Brown breaks the tackle at the 40, at the 30, at the 20, at the 15, at the 10, at the 5, in the end zone. A.J. Brown, 51 yards, touchdown, Titans! My boy needs some oxygen. Hey, can we get some oxygen? So, what up, baby? What's good, baby? Titans begin this drive at their own 10-yard line. Third down and nine upcoming. Tannehill fires right side. Ball caught Corey Davis. Tannehill firing. Pass is caught. Left side. The grab is made by Sharp. That's a first down for the Titans. I put up six. Put up six. Tannehill play fake. Looking in the back of the end zone. Being chased. Sprints out to his right. Fires back toward the middle. Ball caught. Touchdown, Titans. Michael Pruitt, who came to the Titans last year off the Texans practice squad. Tannehill playing out of his mind. The Titans going to get the football, and they need to go get points right here and separate this score, as you like to say, Coach. Yeah, it would be nice. It would be really nice. Hey, Pat Love on finish. Pat Love on finish. Let's go. See if they try to go to Henry pretty early. Here's carry number 14 on the left side, 25-30. He's across the 40 to the 42. Breaks a tackle at the 10. Toss, right side. Henry turning it up, going into the end zone. Touchdown, Titans! That was as efficient as you'd ever want to come out and open up the second half. Great job. That's a way to knock him off the ball, Taylor. Keep that rolling. Keep it rolling. Just at the moment, it looked like the Titans were going to take control of this thing. The Texans answer, and it's still a ball game. Hey, let's go. This one is big quarter, bro. We need it. Let's go. We're good. We're good. That's it. Let's turn up another notch. Let's go. Play fake. Looking. 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 He has all day. He throws deep downfield. What a grab by A.J. Brown. 
give it to Henry. He steps out of a tackle, and they're saying he extended the ball and got it in. Touchdown, Titans! And that gotta be like, nominee for catching the USF, man. Right? It's 53 for 1,500. He needs 48 for the title. Oh, we gotta get that 15. For the rushing title. All right, hold me. Go. Okay, all right, Let's yeah. Go. Let's go. As Henry gets the carry, he's to the 50, to the 45, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. <laughs> wow. Derek <laughs> Henry to the house. You did it, buddy. You did it. Get in the party, but as long as we in there. Put a crown on him, man. Put a crown on Derek, bro. We just got that rushing title, man. We just punched our ticket to go to the playoffs, man. But well, we got to go back to work, clean up the little things, man. Hey, we'll see y'all in Foxborough. Like Sorry. I said at the beginning of the year, why not us, bro? Bring yeah. it in. Let's, Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Titans on three. One, two, three. Hey. Titans offense has been blossoming over the last 10 games. You got the Leading rusher in the league in Derrick Henry. You got the quarterback with the highest passer rating in the league in Ryan Tannehill. And you also have a rookie receiver who is showing out, A.J. Brown. Absolutely. And Coach Dave McGinnis sits down to break down all of the great things that A.J. was able to accomplish against Houston. That's next on Titans All Access. This is Coach Mack. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Today, we're going to look at three plays in the Houston ball game by A.J. Brown, who's having a tremendous rookie year, and watch the magic that he and Ryan Tannehill are creating for the Titans offense. First play we're going to look at, A.J. comes across in motion. Now we've got two tight double stacks here on the outside. We're in man-to-man -man defense with the Texans. They roll down to a short hole robber, and the robber is going to double A.J. Brown. Ryan Tannehill is in such sync with this rookie receiver. He sees immediately that they're doubling, so he holds the ball, does not panic in the pocket, is able to manipulate and buy time as A.J. comes across the field, raises his hand. He's now got the cornerback trailing him in a tailpipe position. Perfect throw on the run, right where he can catch it, up the sideline, touchdown Titans. Second plays in the second quarter. Now, what we've done, Arthur Smith has done a nice little innovation here. He's put Marcus Mariota in the ball game. This is Ryan Tannehill up here at the top. The Houston Texans have gone to a default zone defense. They are now playing quarters coverage. Watch the three linebackers in the second level position. Watch how hard they bite on the play action to Henry. You're going to see a huge area open up right here between the second level and the safeties in the corners playing quarters coverage back here. Nice route up here by A.J. Brown. Starts to move like he's taking off, sticks his foot in the ground, comes across on a deep slant. Perfect throw by Marcus Mariota right out in front of him. This is the catch that put A.J. Brown over 1,000 yards receiving in his rookie year for the Tennessee Titans. Our final play we're going to look at today, this play by Next Gen Stats was deemed the most improbable throw and catch in the National Football League this year. 6.2% chance of completion. We get motion back to a tight trip. You can see up here at the top, A.J. Brown is in a cut split. Ryan Tannehill makes a run fake, stays right on the railroad tracks. You've now got both safeties double covering A.J. Brown. 47 yards down the field. This is a magnificent, magnificent play by Ryan Tannehill, A.J. Brown, the offensive front. This play right here just about put an exclamation point on A.J. Brown's day. Later on on this playoff edition of Titans All Access, General Manager John Robinson joins Mike Keith with his keys to winning at New England. But up next, Mike Vrabel has no interest in the story of his return to Foxborough, but it seems like much of the football world does. Get the entire story next on Titans All Access. The national media's number one story about this playoff game between the Titans and the Patriots concerns Mike Vrabel's return to Foxborough. The national media has been consumed with it. Absolutely, but I mean, it's an exciting story. It is an exciting story, and we understand why they're interested. Remember, 
Vrabel became a Patriot in 2001, before Tom Brady was a star, before Bill Belichick had won anything. And he went on to win three Super Bowls with Patriots teams that were beloved. But the other reason they love Mike Vrabel up there, he's from the Midwest, but he's really kind of a Northeasterner at heart. He kind of is, yeah, he's got a little Boston to him. He's got a lot of that personality. Doesn't take it off anybody. Tough, hardworking, gritty, and a little sarcastic and a little bit gruff. They loved him while he was a Patriot, and they still love him today. But they didn't love Vrabel so much in week 10 of the 2018 season. The Patriots came to Nashville at 7-2 and, and on a six-game winning streak. The Titans were scuffling at 4-4. Four and four. But Tennessee attacked New England from the outset, scoring 17 first-quarter points and taking a lead they would never relinquish. Tom Brady was never able to get comfortable, missing 20 passes and being harassed all day. Brady in trouble, stepping up, sack! Corey Davis and John U. Smith caught touchdown passes. Derrick Henry paced the Titans' rushing attack on a day that Tennessee ran for 150 yards. And the Titans actually outgained the Patriots by over 100 yards. With seven minutes left in the game, Tom Brady had taken a seat as Tennessee went on to win 34-10. But that was just one regular season game. The Titans finished nine and seven and didn't make the 2018 playoffs. The Patriots ended up winning the Super Bowl for the sixth time. And Brady was pretty quick to remind Mike Vrabel of that this past August when the Patriots came to town for joint practices with the Titans. Brady actually presented Vrabel with a trophy signifying what Tennessee's regular season win over New England had meant. It was one game out of 16. More than anyone else, Vrabel got it. And when the two teams practiced together for those two days in August, Vrabel got after it with Brady and Brady gave it right back. The laughs were all in fun, but the work was deadly serious. And as the assembled fans and media saw Bill Belichick coach his Patriots, they completely understood where Vrabel gets his attention to detail. Whether it be their first team, second team, or guys who would eventually be practice squad members, the New England Patriots take everything they do seriously, even when their rookies are told to sing happy birthday to the former Patriot, who's now a head coach of another NFL team. Happy birthday, Coach Vrabel. Happy birthday to you. The preseason game that followed was anticlimactic. Brady and the majority of the Patriots' big names sat, while the Titans' stars mostly made cameos. New England won 22-17, and many wondered then if the two teams would have a date in Foxborough in January. And now we've got the matchup that many wondered about. But one thing's for sure, while everybody has made such a big deal about Mike Vrabel's return to Foxborough and what a big deal it is, the Titans head coach says he'll save homecoming celebrations for high schools and colleges. Mm -hmm. He's not interested at all. All he's interested in is getting a win. I like that. Good I stuff. am into that. All right, well, coming up next, we've got someone else who has some New England roots. General Manager John Robinson will be right here, so stick around. Titans going to take on the New England Patriots this Saturday in Foxborough. Titans General Manager John Robinson joins us for his weekly segment on Titans All Access. All right, so the Patriots are always well known for offense, but this year their defense, amazing. Allowing 14 points, 276 yards per game. They have 36 takeaways. They have 47 sacks. Give me the guys making this Patriots defense go. I mean, really, it's it's at every level of, of the defense. You know, up front, it's, it's Danny Shelton who mans the nose tackle spot. He's a big, strong, wide-bodied guy. He's tough to move. Jamie Collins at the linebacker spot. He moves around to a lot of different positions. Same thing with Hightower and Kyle Vannoy. Those three guys are 
they're really interchangeable in, in how they use them and, and how they either send them or drop them into coverage to to affect the offense. In the back end, you've got you know Devin McCourty, you've got Patrick Chung, guys that have played a lot of football, and then Stephon Gilmore at corner, who's having a you know player of the year type season. So it's really every player on that defense that they kind of intermingle and twist to create confusion, and they're and they're being pr super productive. What must the Titans' offense do well against that talented defense? Well, I think it starts it starts off with taking care of the football. You know, we, we've got to take care of the football. We can't give them. Uh, their their offense, Tom and the boys, uh, extra possessions and staying on track offensively. It's about establishing the running game, setting up the play action pass, maintaining the pocket, you know, when we've got to drop back and throw the ball for Ryan to throw it, and the receivers getting open and, and catching against man coverage. Against Brady and against the Patriots offense, what must Dean Pease Titans defense do well? Well, I mean, I think it's 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 stopping the run. You know, they've got a good back in, in Sony Michelle. Their line is big. They can move move guys off the ball. And then they've, they've got pass catchers at the skill positions. They'll sub those backs in, whether it's James Wyatt or whether it's Burkhead, you know, Edelman in the slot, you know, the rookie, Nikhil Harry's doing some good things. And then you got Philip Dorsett who can really stretch the field vertically. So they challenge you at a lot of different levels. So we've got to do a really good job of executing the defense. Other keys to a Titans victory in Foxborough. Well, I think, you know, we talked about it offensively. It's about, you know, staying on track. It's about running the football, making plays when they present themselves, taking care of the football, staying on track offensively, executing the defense. Go get a win in New England. That's the plan, Mike. All right, John Robinson with us every week on Titans All Access. We'll remind you that the game this Saturday night, it's not Sunday, it's Saturday night, 7.15 Central time kickoff, 7.15 Central. We're on the air with Titans Radio's Titans Countdown at 6 Central, 7 Eastern. We hope you'll join us. For Amy Wells and John Robinson, Mike Keith, thanks you for watching, and we'll see you next time.